So this is kind of my life. There is this other lieutenant who had a pretty similar story. Oh, first precinct officer month 2011. A guy named Rich Jackson, and he'd never spoken publicly before about his issues or concerns with the Minneapolis Police Department. What happened with George Floyd and with other cases, those officers are responsible. Yes, absolutely. And they have some weight in that. But what did the administration do to curtail this or to divert this or keep this from happening before it even got to this point? And when you look at it, from my perspective, they had four or five different opportunities to take care of this before it even got to George Floyd. You would make a recommendation for discipline. We talked a lot about how cops with a pattern of behavior like Chauvin's were not stopped sooner and a process called coaching. Coaching is supposed to be a form of corrective action reserved for minor policy violations. Essentially, there's discipline, which is public and sort of remains uh, within a police officer's personnel file and can have consequences for a police officer's career. Um, and then there's coaching, which does not remain in an officer's file and is not public. So if you have an officer who is, quote unquote, a problem officer, a coaching document can be used to shield an officer who has uh, a proven record of policy violations. But in that same respect, there's only so much that you can protect before it comes to light. And then when it does come to light, then it becomes very obvious. When we sat down to interview him, Jackson had recently left the department over holding an officer accountable, a cop named Ty Jindra, who was ultimately convicted of multiple federal charges. Jackson gave me a hard drive filled with internal documents and police videos. The guy is on the hood. His hands are behind his back. He's not fighting. He's not being uncooperative. Ginger takes his gun and jams it into his temple. And I was like, what the hell? Then he grabs his head, repositions it, slams it back down on the car. What is he doing? And then I look at all the other officers. Everybody's just handcuffing. That gun had gone off. But he went like this, it blew the kid's head off. So this is the next day, you find out about his, another complaint. Another complaint. He pulls the kid out of the car, he doesn't even ask for a driver's license, proof for insurance or nothing, just snatches him out the car, puts a gun to his head. He's starting to see a pattern. And then I came forward and did something about it. I sent it to Internal Affairs that night after Ginger got relieved of duty, happened about two days later. It came out. Oh, Rich is a snitch. Rich is going after cops. It was horrible. And it was very um, demoralizing being a lieutenant. And I can just imagine how my sergeants felt. It angered me a lot because I became a police officer to do the right thing, not to hide stuff. I became a police officer to protect our communities and keep them safe, not to enable bad behavior by officers. <laughs>